I love this video, I'm going to be making a stone axe, like a really old axe made of, made of a stone and wood. So pretty much I'm going to start my model, pretty much model this entirely in Maya. And I'm going to be using the sub D to model this, just because I think it's going to be easier um, than just working in regular low poly. So I gathered a few images here, obviously, that I can use as references. I'm not going to entirely based mine of the images, but I'm going to use them mostly for reference. So for the, uh, the interesting part here will be creating the, uh, the rope that con connects the uh, stone with the wood. And so for that I'm going to use a CP curve tool and I'm just going to wrap it around the actual model. Obviously I made sure to make the um, the wood part as a live model so that I can draw upon it uh, with the CV curve tool. And I'm essentially going to use that for my rope. And to do that I'm going to make a circle and just extrude along the uh, path of the of the curve that I made. And then I'm going to pretty much change um, the shape a little bit, just move some parts so that it makes more sense that it's uh, wrapping around the model. And to do that I'm going to be just moving some of the points of the curve. And this is essentially going to be the rope. I'm using a simple circle for that because I was going to make a, an actual rope geo out of this. And I'm going to show that a little bit later, but I was going to do that with that um, approach. But I decided not to because I don't want a UV unique ropes for this. I wanted to use a essentially a tileable type uh, rope for that. And you'll, you'll see what I mean uh, once I do the texture part uh, of this. So here I'm going to show you what I meant uh, by just creating the rope out of Geo. Um, but then I decided to go against it because I just didn't think it was it's going to work out that well. And to do that, you can pretty much use the same approach of using uh, extruding geo along a curve. Uh, here, one thing I did was I up I transformed component on some of the spots for the rope, so that it's not completely straight. And then I just named it, and I'm going to export this to ZBrush as the high poly. And in ZBrush, I'm just going to use some standard sculpting. Uh, the wood the wood itself is going to be pretty clean it's not going to be beat up so i just have to um, clean it up a little bit add some plain changes but not too much i'm going to add some of the fiber the wood fiber into this but i think um, by the end result i don't think it was necessary uh, because this is going to be added mostly through the material and substance uh, painter So anyway, I'm adding some of the wood fibers here, and for that I'm using the uh, just using the damn standard at a pretty high intensity. So I'm just going to do that around the entire model. And then I'm going to do the uh, almost the same with this the stone itself. Uh, for the stone, I'm going to use the trim dynamic, and then I'm going to use the clay um, brush as well, just so that it looks more beat up.
I'm gonna try not to exaggerate it too much uh, because I'm going for more for a more realistic look here. Uh, it's not stylized as I usually do. And then here for the um, for the rope, I'm going to use one of the tester brushes that comes with ZBrush, uh, which is pretty much a brush. And I just apply it to a straight cylinder, and that's going to be what I'm going to bake uh, for the uh, rope. I'm just going to map uh, my UVs for the rope to that cylinder. So in my I'm just going to make UVs. Uh, UVs for this are going to be pretty easy. So really straightforward UVs. And then the rope, uh, like I said, I'm going to map to the uh, cylinder space so that they share the same UVs. This way I don't have to have unique UVs for all the ropes. I do have to cut them up into pieces so that they fit. And even after you, you're done, well, if you use this method, even after you're done baking, uh, I still recommend you come back here and you're gonna have to clean it up a little bit. Sometimes you might get um, seams that you're gonna have to fix when you do it this way. So in Painter I'm going to use the uh, Bake by Name and I'm going to bake pretty much using the, the standard settings but obviously change the uh, Bake by Name option. And for the uh, textures themselves, I'm going to use some of the existing wood materials that come with Substance Painter. So there's no need to download anything, this already comes with Substance Painter. I'm using the latest version of uh, Substance 2020. And obviously as it is with any material, it um, looks pretty good but you always have to change a few settings. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to add more uh, wood fibers to this one. One thing I'm also doing is I'm going to set this to project as triplanar so that the um, UV seams are not too noticeable. And I'm also going to change the roughness a little bit to add a bit more variation to that. I want it to be somewhat shiny but not uniformly shiny. Have some spots that are less shiny than others. And then I'm going to use pretty much the same material for the rope. I'm just going to change the color and some of the settings as well. Mainly I'm going to get rid of the uh, ambient occlusion that's between the, uh, the creases of the rope. And then I took one of the other wood materials but I just want some of the fibers from that and I, I deleted everything else out of it. And then for the stone, I'm going to use my uh, 3DX rocks, rock material. Um, if you don't want to use this one, what I would recommend is you use the concrete material that comes with Substance Painter, uh, which is pretty much close to this, since I get rid of a lot of the layers on this one. So I'm using this material for that. Like I said, if you have access to this material, but don't want to use it, you can just use the concrete one that comes with Painter. Uh, you will have to change some of the settings and probably add like a roughness map on top. Uh, so pretty, here's pretty much the final result, uh, this is in Marbles at Toolback, uh, but otherwise that's it for this video, if you have any comments make sure you leave them in the comment section below, if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe, and if you like the video make sure you hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in the reel, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. 
I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything, so click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.